With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the BetMGM studio. On this edition of Titans All Access, the Nissan Insider is a good one. First round draft pick, J.C. Latham. Mike Keith goes to the dogs while I go to the Titans Halloween party. We go beneath the surface with T-Rack as he makes a youngster's wish come true. And of course, head coach Brian Callahan is part of every episode of Titans All Access. It's Cali's Corner, presented by SeatGeek. Yesterday, you had a statistical advantage all day long and certainly at the end of the game. But because of the special teams issues, that didn't end up mattering. Is, is one of the more disappointing elements on the day that you did some things well on offense and you did some things well on defense, but special teams' mistakes kept you from just sort of playing the Detroit Lions straight up almost? Yeah, it was a really a weird game in that regard, you know, and I think it's it's not just the special teams. I mean, we turned the ball over four times on offense, um, two of which gave them plus field position on top of it. Um, and then to respond, we, we gave up five touchdowns in the red zone. And that's, a, a for better lack of a better term, a, a, a calamity of errors that, that allowed them to score 52 points. And a huge part of that is because we didn't help ourselves in any phase uh, help the other phase. You know, we we kind of went back and forth early. Um, it felt like it was a long time, and then all of a sudden you look up, it's only the top of the second quarter. <laughs> there was moments where I thought we, we were really good defensively. There was moments in, where I thought we moved the ball uh, it was as well as probably passed the ball in terms of timing and efficiency. And, and Calvin had a big day, which was good to see from him. He bounced back in a big way. I just think that it's it's unfortunate that we didn't put ourselves in position to, if we were going to get beat, let's get let's get beat, you know. Right. And, and we didn't give our chance, ourselves a chance to even do that. You mentioned the performance of Calvin Ridley. What was it about that game, anything that enabled you to get him going so early? Our protection was was good. Uh, we had a solid day in pass protection. Um, that always is the starting point. Uh, I thought Mason played on time. He looked comfortable. Um, he was accurate with the ball, uh, especially early in that game. I mean, he, he was he was finding himself a bit of a rhythm. I think our offense found a bit of a rhythm on top of it, and um, Calvin was the beneficiary. He got some some matchups. We got him matched up on um, on the long ball down the right sideline. Got him matched up on on their nickel, which is good. Uh, on the on the inside fade, we got a matchup against Branch, which is the, you know kind of their safety. So he he got some matchups that were favorable, and he won, and he made big plays, and um, you know he he just he played with a ton of confidence. That was a Calvin that we've been waiting to see. First thoughts on Gerard Mayo and the New England Patriots, your opponent for Sunday. Tough team, physical. Uh, they they run the ball. Um, their defense is. Uh, still very much a New England defense. I see there's, you know, they, they have the similarities. It's always been a good defensive football team. Um, so, yeah, you see all of the things about New England that's made them New England. Another opponent whose quarterback situation is up in the air. Are you tired of this story yet? <laughs> it doesn't even phase me anymore, to be honest. It's just part of where some of these teams are. And, um, you know, it's they got a young, talented player they drafted that they that has played pretty good. And uh, you can always find uh, Jacoby finding his way into a game and playing well. You know, it's just kind of what he does. And, um you know, th th at least they're not too stylistically different. You know, it's not like you're dealing with two very distinct offensive pieces. Um, they both are kind of passers and have some ability to move, but their, their offense won't change a ton depending on who's in the game. For more of our conversation with Brian Callahan, we invite you to enjoy the OTP. You can watch the OTP on the Titans YouTube channel or at TennesseeTitans.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the OTP wherever you get your podcasts. There is only one official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP. Stay tuned. More Titans All Access right after this. Second and six. Inside the 15, he takes it over the head of Branch to the 11, gain of 26 and a first down. That's the way you do it right there. That is a National Football League throw and catch. That was well covered. That was so well executed. Exactly what we needed. What made that play work wasn't just the perfect throw and catch, but also the outstanding protection. The protection is improving each week, led by a 21-year-old who learns both when he succeeds 
and when he fails. First round pick J.C. Latham is wise beyond his years and is incredibly talented to boot. As Amy Wells learns in this week's Nissan Insider, Latham never stops working to learn as he never stops learning at work. So J.C. Latham, you come in here as a rookie and pretty immediately you know that you are going to be a starter. You're going to be having a major role in the Titans offense. Were you surprised by how quickly you were given so much responsibility? Uh, yes and no. Um, the part of me that was surprised was, you know, more so coming from high caliber programs like Alabama, IMG, and uh, Catholic Memorial the School before IMG, you know, you walk in and you have to earn your right. You know, and I'm not saying it wasn't earned um, here, but the other part of me that wasn't surprised was because, you know, it's an investment, you know. I mean, guys want guys to come in and be ready. You know, obviously there's a developmental stage that goes into it. You know, when you're here, you got to get adjusted to the speed and learn the new style of play and the playbook and all that. But I mean, you know, they, they drafted you for a reason. They didn't draft you to sit, sit the bench. So the other part of me was kind of expecting, you know, to kind of play early, so. Has there been a moment where you felt maybe overwhelmed or like things were going too fast and it, you needed to kind of catch up really quick? Yeah, um, probably. I mean, you get like bits and pieces. It really depends. So I remember when I first got here, you know, we installed like just a couple plays and I was like, okay, if we go at this pace, I'll be good. And then one day we installed like 10 plays. So let me put everything down and just lock in on these plays, you know, and that, that's when it was like, okay, this is a lot right now. So I got to kind of really um, get into my playbook and, you know, really stay atop of, on top of it, you know, and then sometimes they back off on the install a little bit. So give me, give everybody more time to study what was already installed. But um, it just depends on what it is. I remember one day, I think we installed like 17 plays. So yeah, that was a day where I was like, all right, I got to kind of block out everything else and stay locked in right here. So how did you learn how to really just lock in on what you need to do, whether that's on the field, whether that's in the weight room, whether that's getting in your playbook later at night. That has to be a skill that you learned, right? Yeah, obviously being in Alabama, you know, you're around a lot of great players. I mean, I reached out to guys like uh, Will Anderson, Jameer Gibbs, you know, Bryce Young, guys who are high caliber players and um, doing great in their rookie year. You know, reached out to them about how to handle it and how do I, you know, kind of exceed expectations and, you know, make my mark um, with my team in my own rights. And then being here, seeing guys like, you know, Peter Skowinski, um, Lloyd Cushenberry, you know, guys like that kind of set the tone as far as what you should be doing on and off the field. You know, that's kind of, I want to kind of match that intensity and that standard, so. I mean, going all the way back to high school, you went to IMG Academy, yeah. you're by yourself in a completely different state from yeah. the rest of your family. I guess you kind of learn what works best for you in that environment? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, IMG, I was telling you know somebody, um, it's it's a sacrifice because I'm I was in Wisconsin before that. You know, it, it, you're away from your family, you're away from the people you grew up around. You're in a whole different school environment, new team, you know, and then it kind of becomes a, a little bit surreal that like, hey, like you're going here to get ready for college. So um, it kind of helps you mature in that aspects to kind of like let you know that hey, this is what college is going to be like to an extent you know it'll obviously be a lot harder because you'll be grown and you'll really be on your own but like this is the best way to prepare for it so it was definitely a great opportunity so we've got to talk about all the extra work that you do because we see you out at practice we see you doing everything that you're asked to do and then we see you on the field later going through what looks like a completely separate practice yeah. you're working hard all by yourself usually Where did that start where even after a day of practice, you continue to do extra practice? One of my like biggest role models as an athlete is Kobe Bryant. And um, I remember just hearing his story about where he came from and how he see guys who, you know, are, are really good in the NBA, but he said, you know, they work out once a day and I work out twice a day, I'll get better twice as fast than them, you know? And then he just took that from two to three to four. You know, I was, I think I was 15 at the time when I first heard about that. So I kind of just took it and ran with it. So um, when I first played O-line at that age, I was like, all right, well, you know, these guys are so, so far ahead of me right now and I got to essentially catch up to them. I've only been playing O-line for a couple months and they've been playing their whole life. You know, I got to work out like twice a day. So I got to get my work in after practice. I got to get some more work in later on in the day, you know? And then I saw the um, the progress that I've made and I saw, you know, just how quick I've grown into the um, positions and really fast. So I knew like, okay, the work's paying off. You know, you see that the amount of work that you put in is, is helping you get to that next level. So 
I mean, just believing in that, that's kind of what laid the foundation, no matter what level you're in. If you put in the hard work here, you'll be all right. When Titans All Access continues, a beneath the surface that will melt your heart. The Tennessee Titans have been involved for years with Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee, helping make wishes come true for countless youngsters and their families. Earlier this year, Make-A-Wish's Beth Torres approached the Titans about a wish that was just a little bit different. A young man named Carson wanted to hang out with the Titans' multi-time Pro Bowl mascot, T-Rack. The only way to share this wonderful story is to go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Titan organization, got a surprise for you. Turn around, turn around, we got a surprise for you. They say surprise wish, your wishes to be granted. For the Coast game, you're gonna be t Red Jr. So this has been a fun wish to watch because everything was magical from the beginning. And I said at first it was humbling that of all the people he could meet, he chose t Rack. So t Rack went to his home and told him he could come to training camp. We have a special surprise for you. So we decided that we would love for you to come out to training camp this week. You get to come to training camp as t Rack's special guest. And he got to go to training camp. That's you. That's him. That's my favorite player. T -Rack. Oh, t Rack. Yeah. Then today, he's going to be t Rack Jr. Welcome. We're going to go straight to the field to start. What do you say? Thank you. You're welcome. Where's T-Rack at? For dinner? You're not going to do it, Bob. Here he is. What's this, the maps? When it came around for the Make-A-Wish, it was kind of obvious what he was going to choose. He could have went to Disneyland. He could have had a backyard oasis. He could have had anything in the entire world. Make-A-Wish was great for that, but he ultimately chose to hang out with T-Rack. Joining T-Rack today, we have a very special guest. Please welcome Titans fan, Carson. What? Yeah. This is Carson here, T-Rack Jr. Can you give me a big tighten up, Carson? Tighten up. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. We are grateful for the partnership with the Titans. They are amazing wish granters. And at every turn, they make things special for each individual child. So today, making Carson's wish come true to meet T-Rack is a first for us. I feel like this experience is really just so meaningful to Carson and he's just, he's gonna remember for this entire life. For me, as mom, I just, I love it. I mean, I would give my son the world. So something that not everyone can experience and my son gets to do it, I just, I love it. And I'll be crying a lot. Titans fans, we're excited to introduce something new. The Foolish Wine and Supply Company, part of the Tennessee Titans official wine club. Crafted for your everyday moments, these wines bring premium taste to every occasion while honoring the Titans legacy. With each bottle, you're not only enjoying Napa Valley quality, but you're also supporting the Tennessee Titans Foundation and giving back to our community. We've got two standout wines in this new lineup. Rough and Dressed Cabernet Sauvignon and Music City Football Chardonnay. These wines are perfect for celebrating game day wins or simply relaxing at home with family and friends. Ready to taste the new lineup? Head over to foolishclub.com and shop the collection. When Titans All Access returns, Mike and I both step outside the BetMGM studio to enjoy some Halloween fun. Stay with us to see for yourself. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Welcome to Nissan Stadium. Obviously, we're gonna play the Patriots here this weekend, but right now, we're at a different sort of event with a bunch of special guests and stars. It's Titans, Tito's, and Tails Dog Day in the South Plaza, just outside of Nissan Stadium. For a charitable donation, you can be here with your dog and their Halloween costume contest for not just the dogs, but the people. Let's go meet some folks. Murphy. Hi, Murphy. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Welcome to Nissan Stadium. <laughs> oh, yeah. Abby's trying to escape. <laughs> Abby wants to be on TV. Okay, Mills, let's go say hi. Very nice. 
Let's say hi, very nice. Oh, oh, oh. She's like, pet me. <laughs> <laughs> You're so lovely. Thank you so much. For the doll. Somebody needs to take you home. Well, I rescued her. No, oh, good for you. <laughs> say hello to Cardi B, Charlie. <laughs> the small admission fee went to benefit old friends, senior dog sanctuary, and new leash on life. Everybody had a good time. Titans cheer here. T-Rack made an appearance. Doug the Pug, the famous dog, stopped by. Food trucks, local vendors, giveaways, and most importantly, dogs, dogs, and more dogs. You did not expect to be on television. People are going to see this all over the place. <laughs> Look, this dog's name is Millie. Come here. <laughs> Y'all have the <laughs> You are the best. I like your costume. This is from Dumb and Dumber, right? OK, so which is which? We've got Scarlet and Paisley. Can you believe all these dogs? I know, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> can I do one? You can do them all. OK. All right, let's see. Let's sit. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so I know Amy Wells got to do something fun this week, too, outside of Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park in the Bed MGM studio. Let's see where she went. Amy, take it away. Happy Halloween! Mike, I made it out of the Bed MGM studio, but I didn't get as far as you did. I'm in the bubble at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park for the Titans annual Halloween party. This is an awesome event where there's trains and food trucks and all the candy you could eat. A great time for families of Titans staff and players and coaches to all come together, celebrate Halloween, and have a ton of fun. I like your awesome costumes. This guy's the Grim Reaper. I actually have a watch right here. Most of the time. But the Grim Reaper has always been dead. Why does the Grim Reaper even have, have a watch? Each year, families look forward to the tradition of coming here and spending this time together. My son did it for years, and it's something that we still talk about and cherish today. So to be able to have this opportunity to spend time together, to get to know each other, to learn new faces that are welcome in our, in, welcomed into the Titans community, we look forward and we cherish that. Can you all do it? It's a me, Mario. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> Count up. Swagged out. Happy, Happy Halloween! I like Halloween so much, I can just flip on my back like this. All right, I'm going to head back to the Bed MGM studio now, but there is tons of all access on the way, so stick around. It's time for the decision of the week presented by Hughes and Coleman. The Titans' decision to feed the ball to Calvin Ridley certainly proved to be a good one, as Ridley made 10 catches for 143 yards. Rudolph looking, firing deep right side. There's Ridley. He's got it at the 40. Puts on a move and is taken down at the 30 on a great tackle by Joseph. Ridley's extra work last week in preparation certainly paid as he made every catch count. The Titans are looking for more games like that from Calvin Ridley for the rest of the season. That's the decision of the week, sponsored by Hughes and Coleman, official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. Mike, we've got a big home game this weekend, so how about some keys to beating the New England Patriots? Well, okay. Ah, Mike. Key number one, keep feeding Calvin Ridley. Ridley's 2024 season was jump-started with a 10-catch, 143-yard performance last Sunday. The Titans got him involved early and often, and he made some big plays, including a 47-yard reception. Calvin Ridley is the Titans' most dynamic offensive performer. If the offense is to continue to grow, you have to feed number zero. Key number two, keep up the heat. The Titans have gotten three sacks in the last two weeks from Arden Key, and in limited passing downs for the Lions last Sunday, Tennessee recorded four sacks as a team. The pass rushers won one-on-ones, the blitzes contributed to the pressure, so more of this, please. No matter who quarterbacks New England this weekend, 
they need to feel some sort of heat from the Tennessee Titans. Key number three, keep the ground game going. The Titans' overall results have hardly been what they wanted, either from a record standpoint or from that of a statistical standpoint offensively. But one area has been consistently good, the ground game. It's been consistent no matter the score or the opponent. It was the biggest factor in the team's win at Miami. 120 rushing yards per game and 4.4 yards per carry are both plenty good. The Titans need to clean up several areas while maintaining what has been the best part of their 2024 team, the ground game. Well, hopefully we see one or two or more Tony Pollard touchdowns this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Absolutely, and you can now, listen. Now, wait a minute. Before you wrap all of this up, we need to remind people about daylight saving time. Well, then do that. We need to remind everybody. Here's your friendly reminder, mostly for me, but everybody else needs to remember this too. Daylight savings time is ending on Sunday, so we need to turn our clocks back an hour. You get an extra hour of sleep. Mike Keith, continue on. Fall back. Yes, fall back. And fall back onto your Titans radio affiliate. <laughs> Airtime this Sunday is 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, Titans Patriots Nissan Stadium this Sunday on Titans Radio. For Amy Wells, who's falling back, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time. Just change your clock. That's all. Extra Just a reminder. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>